Hi everyone, this is Bev here, Clark Vision, and <laughs> I'm just feeling quite happy. Um, the postman delivered a grail in the mail today, that's why. Um, and I've been so excited, I've just, it's just come off the turntable right now, because it's about to get shown at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, um, I've been wanting this particular record for a while and uh, it, it, it finally arrived basically. <laughs> um, so this is basically just a vinyl update. Um, I'm trying it with the main light off and the back lights on and the desk lamp here. Um, it's still daylight outside but it's still kind of rubbishy. And rainy. Um, so I'm hoping the lighting's okay as far as seeing things go. Um, we'll see. So um, this is just an update and it's just vinyl only. There is no CDs in this one. Um, there's about eight altogether and um, just what I've kind of grabbed uh, over the past two to three weeks maybe. Uh, since my last update was, I think, about three or so, maybe four weeks ago, something like that. Um, uh, and they're basically, they're all, yeah, they are all from online places. Um, a mixture of eBay, Amazon and uh, Discogs for a couple. Um, so I'll just get on with it. Um, first one was a cheap eBay find. Um, you can pick this up fairly cheap. Um, and it is, I probably won't see that too well, it's The Tourists and uh, Reality Effect is the name of the album. Now this is not really metal. I think I'm actually going to put that big light on. Just bear with me a second. Just to help. Um, so, yeah, The Tourists and... Um, Reality Effect is the name of this album. Now, they're not metal, as I say. They, these are kind of um, new wave, uh, power pop kind of, um, slightly alternative, but I'd probably say new wave mostly. Um, you might put them in with bands that were coming out at the time, like perhaps uh, The Jam, um, oh, you know, you go, to, you name them, and they just go right out of your head. Um, the Smiths, um, you know, just the whole. It was uh, coming up to the eighties, and all these kind of new wave bands were coming in. Um, this particular record is nineteen seventy-eight, is it? doesn't actually say on the back cover, but it does say it on the record. Um, but anyway, the tourists are basically the band that Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart were in prior to forming the Rhythmics. And this album, I picked it up simply for the song that I've mentioned in the past. Uh, they do a cover of Dusty Springfield's I Only Want To Be With You. It's track two there. Um, which I really like. So I thought I would just hunt down a copy of the album if it wasn't going to cost me too much and just see what it sounds like. Um, it's actually not bad. Um, some of the songs are okay. It's not something I think I've listened to too often because um, this kind of stuff's not usually my style. Um, it's not... I don't hate it or anything. It's just not really something I listen to. It's on the logo label. Um, it's 1979 actually, this uh, record, so that's uh, the logo. Um, and incidentally enough, it was produced by Tom Allen, Judas Priest fame, uh, etc. So um, yeah, it's not bad. And um, for the price, which was a little bit three pounds, uh, it's in decent condition as well. The sleeve's nice. I wasn't going to complain too much, or it's not as if, you know, I've blown a fortune or anything, so that's that one. Um, another one I found on eBay, uh, sorry, Amazon this one came from. Um, this was going at a really nice price, so I decided to jump on it. Um, and 
it's another Power Wolf. Um, this is their second album, um, which was only originally released on CD and it was remastered and reissued on vinyl in 2017. This one is on Metal Blade. Uh, it says mastered for vinyl in May 2017. Um, so this is Lupus Day. And um, I wasn't too familiar with this album either from Power Wolf. Um, and I think I mentioned when I got the first one on vinyl, it sounded there were hints of Metallica about some of the songs. But this one, not so much. This is more sounding like Power Wolf's own style and what they kind of were going on to become now. This is a bit more similar to what. Uh, I'm used to from Power Wolf, and um, so I uh, really enjoyed this. Again, it's got some quite strange, dark um, uh, song titles, you know. Uh, we Take It From The Living Saturday Satan, um, In Blood We Trust, Vampires Don't Die, When The Moon Shines Red, Mother Mary Is A Bird Of Prey, and on and on and of course um well being on metal blade this they do nice packages this comes with the uh, poly lined inner so there's the hype sticker there um, it's 180 gram pretty smart uh, inner sleeves and uh, yeah and it comes with its uh, inner sheet which is quite stiff card. Let's see uh, lyrics and credits. Um, there we are, and that's the other side there. And it also comes with, as some of them do, uh, a poster of the album artwork. Uh, it's slightly different though, because it's not the, the black background. Oops, one. Um, and it's kind of a, it's a matte finish as well, so you wouldn't get a shine off it, but uh, I don't know how well you can sort of see that there, but there you go, more than enough of this to do, so bit smart stuff. Um, and yes, I quite like the album, so I'm quite happy with that obviously. So, um, and that was a uh, reasonably good price on Amazon. According to what their stock thing said at the time, it was apparently the, the last one they had of it. Um, maybe that's why the uh, price was pretty decent. Sometimes they do that, but they don't always. I've seen other ones where it depends on the band, I guess, and all that stuff. Uh, next one is another cheap eBay grab, and for one pound thirty, I was quite pleased to uh, win this one. Um, there was only one bidder, and I just bid on. It was started at 99 pence, and here we go. Um, Dokken, Back for the Attack. This is my first Dokken record. Um, I thought I do want to kind of listen to them, give them a try, because in a similar way to Rat, um, I didn't really follow them, if you like, too much in the 80s. I knew they were around, I had heard the odd song, but hadn't really studied them properly. Um, I don't know if it was just that they... They weren't as big as other bands in the UK perhaps, but um, the same would be with Rat. Uh, and interestingly enough, when Metal Mickey did his video about uh, Rat and Dokken recently, he mentioned both of these bands. I thought his comments were interesting because at the time I was just listening to Dokken at that same time. So um, I thought, okay, right. That's what he thinks, um, and it'll be interesting to see what I think as well. Um, so this is in lovely condition, this, you know, the cover's nice, the inner sleeve's uh, intact, there's no splits or anything, just a little bit of handling, um, and it's on Electra. I better just move my uh, keyboard out the way or I'm liable to cut myself here. Uh, Electra, uh, and yeah, it's in quite nice condition. Um, there is a few kind of surface scuffs on it here and there, but it is pretty decent. Um, 
And so I've had a couple of listens to this and I actually quite enjoy it. Um, I prefer this a lot more um, than Out of the Cellar, which I have um, by Rat. Um, just my personal preference, but I uh, much prefer this right away. Um, I think perhaps Don Dawkins' vocals appeal to me better. I just prefer his voice. Um, I seem to prefer the guitar work of uh, George Lynch. Um, from what was here and there. And so <coughs> I also grabbed another couple of Dokken records um, off of eBay. Um, they were quite lowly priced. They were more expensive than Back to the Attack. I did pay more than £1.30 for each of these. Um, but they were both under £10. And um, getting two for the same seller, I was going to get a deal on shipping as well. Um, so I picked up Under Lock and Key and um, Tooth and Nail um, and both of these are Japanese pressings. The only thing missing is they don't have the OBI strips or the OB strips. Um, they came without those but I am not too fussed. Um, considering the state of this, this is as mint as you can get without being mint. It's near mint, you know. Um, there's barely a mark on it. I kind of believe how nice this actually is. It's a stiff cover. Um, as per Japan you get a bit of a write-up about the band here. Um, details. Uh, and here is your inner sheet which I guess might have been the inner sleeve um, if it was the, the British version or the European or US version maybe. And uh, lyrics. And uh, you know, the vinyl itself. I wondered if they were promos at first when I saw. Again, it's Electra, but it's white label with the kind of black and red in a smaller circle, the logo. But they're not promos. Um, they're just made in Japan, regular issues. Um, but this doesn't even look like it's been played. There is not a mark. I think, is this the one? Where I spotted one tiny little surface mark. I can't even see it, but on one of them I detected one scuff. Um, and you know, and it's just absolutely beautiful condition. Um, so I've listened to Back for the Attack about two to three times. I've listened to the other two just the once because they only came in the other day. Um, Again, I quite enjoyed them. Uh, this under lock and key I thought was very good. Um, tooth and nail. This one was my least favourite of the three that I've listened to so far. Um, again, it's a Japanese pressing, just minus the OBI. And again, it's in fantastic, fantastic condition. Um, it's the, the back. Again, stiff, crispy sleeve. Same details inside. Uh, another inner sheet with details. Um, the inner sheet with the lyrics. And the band. And again, it's exactly the same uh, label, the white label with the black and red Electra. And again, just like the other one, spotless condition, absolutely spotless. I can't, you know, they must never have been played much, these two. Um, I'm assuming that whoever bought them at the time, they, they probably just tossed the OBI strip off as part of the unwrapping stuff. Um, I will admit, when it comes to the Japanese ones, I prefer to have the OBI strip, especially if it's, you know, like a, a band I really like, like Pretty Maids or... Or Def Leppard or Iron Maiden even. Um, so I do prefer to have it, but if they're not there, it's not the end of the world. I'm still happy to have the, the Japanese pressing. So out of the three so far, I would say Tooth and Nail was my least favourite. I thought this was more on the similar lines as Rats out of the cellar. Um, but I think, is this the earliest one? 1984? 
I think this is the earliest out of those three. I think the other one's 85. I know back for the attack 87. Um, so it's possibly that, I don't even know, is this their debut robe? Um, or anyone? Um, that this may be, they, they got a bit better after releasing this one. Um, but I, I feel that Dokken, from the three there, there's a progression of getting sounding better as they went. Um, and I just preferred their music. Um, so I, uh, I think I'm going to be hanging on to these records. I'm um, so quite pleased with that. Um, then another one which was on my want list and it's been one I've been looking around for for a while and I came across this on eBay from a seller in Germany because um, you'd be hard pushed to find it anywhere else I think you you might get it somewhere else but um, <coughs> I think Germany would be your your best bet for finding it and I don't know how many people have ever heard of this band. Um, I'm not too familiar with them myself. <clears throat> but it's a band called No Trouble. Not Trouble. I know there's a band called Trouble. It's a different band. Uh, no Trouble. And this is their debut album. And it's titled Looking For Trouble. Which it doesn't say on the front. But it is on the spine. Uh, Looking For Trouble. And you probably won't can read that. I doubt. Um, and it is on the back as well, looking for trouble. Um, it's in excellent condition, so I was happy about that. It is a German pressing. Um, that must be some kind of price code sticker there, I think. And it comes on Hot Blood Records, a label I'm not familiar with. Just a plain inner sleeve. Um, in very nice condition. Um, again, there was a few marks on it, and this record was quite dirty when I got it. It was a lot of stir, so I give it a good clean, or so I thought. Um, the, by the time I got to the end of side one, when I went to change it over, I noticed there was a big ball of fluff stuck to the the, the needle and the stylus there. Um, so I thought, oh my god, so I uh, cleaned all that up and gave it another clean. And I'm thinking maybe it's been stored for a while and it's some of the dust's just got ingrained in a little bit. But generally it plays very well and I don't know, you probably call these guys um, second tier metal band or something. Um, they are a German band. This came out in 1980, I think it's 1985. It's not actually dated anywhere on this record. According to Discogs, I think it's 1985. Um, and it's kind of just like the, the traditional 80s metal that was coming through um, second tier style. Um, quite melodic. Um, there's a good bit of guitar riffs going on here and there. Um, I still to decide how much I like it because I know when I first heard this on YouTube a while back I liked it enough to want to put it on my wants list but then that was quite a while ago and listened to it now I think did I really mean to you know so I'm going to give this a few more listens um, and see how I got on with it um, it's not too bad uh, the other th interesting thing about this um, the uh, this is side A here. The track listing on the actual label here is correct, whereas the track listing on the back sleeve here is all jumbled up. They're all completely out of order and on different sides and all the rest of it. Um, so that confused me at first <laughs> when I was listening. But, um, not too bad. I was quite happy to find it. But uh, I need to give myself some more listens to that one. Right, second last is an essential. I finally got around to ordering um, and I got this off Amazon as well, and partly because I had a voucher so I put it to good use. I thought this has just got to be ordered. Finally, a year later, I think it's just past its year anniversary of release, um, Sabaton's latest The Great War. And I've gone for the history edition, which means you get a bit of narrative before each track, just a brief bit about what the song's about or the particular person that it's focused about. Um, and obviously this is all to do with uh, the First World War. Um, 
it's just a single album. I actually thought it was maybe a double album because it is a gatefold, but no, it's a single album. Um, and it's just classic Sabaton. Um, it's uh, you know what you're getting with Sabaton, and they just do not disappoint. This is a solid album full of powerful tracks. Um, and the, the guys there on the inner, they're all kind of sort of, it's kind of decked up First World War style photos. <coughs> Um, so it's a limited edition on black vinyl, um, which basically means no only press so many, I guess. Um, 180 gram. Uh, I'm pleased to say it came from Amazon without a single mark on it, a single crease or anything. It was fantastic. Um, and there's the inner, which is a, a fold out sheet actually. Um, it's one of these double ones where you have all the lyrics and a bit of credits here. Sorry for the gloss. Even so, the text for the lyrics is still pretty small. That could have been going to be a little bit bigger. And that's the back. Um, but if you're a Sabaton fan at all, well, you're keen to try Sabaton out, and um, this is as good as any of the others that have gone previously. And now for the grail. Um, this one was the one that came from Discogs. I had been looking for it for a long time, and I knew I wasn't going to have to, uh, I wasn't going to get this for the standard price anymore, because it was limited press, and I think pretty much they've all sold out. From the record company, um, so people who had copies they were going to inflate it. Um, however, this seller on Discogs had one, um, there was a couple on eBay that I had seen, and they were wanting 70 and 95 pounds. And I thought, You're having a giraffe, and here was a seller on Discogs who had it at half of that or best offer. So I put in an offer um, and the seller accepted. Um, so it was an Italian seller and here it is um, Blazing Stone, the uh, band created by uh, Cedric Forsberg. Um, this band is named after Running Wild's album Blazing Stone and they are kind of running wild worship. Um, this is Totally um, pure pirate metal style, this one. It's all about, well, Return to Port Royal. Um, so it's all about Port Royal and pirates. You know, obviously, Gone and Wild had an album called Port Royal, so um, they've obviously just taken the whole pirate thing um, and created an absolute epic album. Um, this was the debut from Blazing Stone and as soon as I heard this, I discovered them on YouTube, and as soon as I heard this I thought I've got to get that because it's so good. They do a very, very good job of uh, the style of music that Running Wild created. Um, so if you like your fast um, pirate metal, um, Running Wild style speed metal, you need to get this. Darcy, hunt this down. <laughs> it is on CD as well, so you probably get it a little bit cheaper on the CD version, but it's definitely a must. Um, so yeah, and what's more, was even better about this is it's it's on underground power in Europe, and uh, I think it was under storm spell for the US, perhaps for the US distribution, maybe. Um, there's five hundred altogether. Mine's is number eighty-eight, and. 350 were on black vinyl and 150 were on black and blue splatter. And I got one of the black and blue splatters, which was cheaper than the other two, which were just the black that I saw on eBay. And, um, you know, so it's 180 gram, and that is just very cool. It's one of the nicest splatter records I've got, actually. Um, I'm not overly keen on all the splatter colourings, but I think this one's pretty smart, I have to say. Um, absolutely, and it's new condition. There's a couple of surface marks, and I just think that's probably down to it being in the inner sleeve. So when I took it out, 
there was like a tiny little bit of uh, a, a speck of blue. I think it was just a speck of wax that had broken off the record maybe. And I just wondered if that's maybe scratched it on the inside and there's a, a, a light scuff and I think that must have been what that was. But it doesn't affect the play, thank God. And the inner sleeve's nice and stiff. Lyrics, credits, outer sleeve is so cool. Um, I'm absolutely over the moon to have this. Um, I have three other blazing stones. Uh, I want to get everything. I think I've got two or three more to get. Uh, I know there's a live one, there's an EP, uh, there's another album I need, so um, it's either three or four more maybe. But <sighs> so happy, so happy. I think this is going to have to go on again actually. So that's me and I, here we are babbling away. So um, thanks for watching. <laughs> Um, and I'll speak to you in another video and I've just put up a room tour video so if you haven't checked that out yet go and have a look and you'll see a better uh, detailed account of this place I'm sitting in. Uh,